Now let's get to the meat of this issue, the Hardy-Weinberg equation. You've seen it before, I'm certain. This is how we're going to derive our phenotypic frequencies or our genotypic frequencies from the allelic frequencies that we see in the population. Uh, it's a little bit more tricky to go around this way because we have to uh, use this uh, fancy equation, uh, which I could show you the derivatives of, but it's not really important. What you need to know is that in this case, p squared equals the frequency of the dominant allele or one of the alleles. It's really pretty arbitrary whether you assign it to p or q. And q is the uh, frequency of the other. So 2pq is the frequency of the heterozygote and q Q squared is the frequency of the other gene form, or the, uh, by default, we'll just call it the recessive form. So P squared, 2PQ, and Q squared covers all three of the genotypes that we were uh, observing in the table. So now you have a complete understanding, right? Anyway, um, we can then break it down and say that if we are looking at the allelic frequency, we can say the P uh, is equal to the frequency of A and Q is equal to the frequency of little a, such that the whole population is covered by this little guy at the bottom, the ratio of P squared, ratio of 2PQ, and to the ratio of Q squared. That covers our population. That's how we might note these things. Again, you might ask, why on earth do I need to know this Hardy-Weinberg principal equation uh, when I'm going to be a doctor, not a uh, population geneticist? Well, the bottom line is you need to know it because it's going to be on your exam. So you see the exclamation point at the top there? We know it's going to be on the exam, so uh, we need to understand how to work with it and what it all means. So let's take a look then at the Hardy-Weinberg law and where this equation came from and why, because uh, it can be a little bit confusing to understand uh, why we have some statement like this. So Hardy-Weinberg law, I need you to understand first that it is a theoretical case, right? It doesn't really exist in nature. So Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium states that a population at equilibrium has an allelic and genotypic frequencies that remain constant from generation to generation. Now, as you probably recall, uh, populations change, right? Allelic frequencies change in populations. So why have this crazy statement that's totally theoretical? Well, the point is this is a standard at, uh, by which to compare evolution is happening or allelic frequencies are changing in a population. So if we set a standard that says, what does it look like when they're not changing? We can then say, hmm, well, they might be changing because the frequencies have changed. And then we can look at uh, what things cause those changes. And again, that's where we consider societal things as well as uh, genetic factors and environmental factors that might influence the prevalence of a particular allele. Going back to the example that I introduced you to earlier in the lecture with the CCR5 receptors, you could see that perhaps this uh, spontaneous mutation that's uh, become hereditary has an advantage when individuals are exposed to the HIV virus. Um, and perhaps when they experience this plague that we think that it might have selected for it in the beginning, uh, it was also an advantage, and that's why it has a prevalence in that population. What is this population at equilibrium thing all about, you might ask? Uh, you may remember, see if you can for a moment, some of the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium rules. Uh, what constitutes a population that is actually at equilibrium?
take a moment to think about that. And then I'll reveal them to you because, of course, I know them. <laughs> Here they are. So a theoretical population in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium uh, says uh, this population has an infinitely large size, right? So uh, there is definitely not a small population. We call it infinitely large, so huge. And there is no immigration or emigration between this population, right? Into or out of this population with any other population. Uh, none. Of course, we know that's not reality. We also know that uh, uh, equilibrium population has no mutations and it has totally random matings, so no individual choice, and there is no natural selection occurring. So again, Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium rules are really uh, not very realistic for an actual population, but it is a great standard at which to, or by which to compare situations that are not in equilibrium and may be experiencing evolution. So, uh, the point here for us is changes in allelic frequency. Uh, there may be variation in allelic frequency between one population and another, and we need to understand how those things are calculated again. So, let's now apply uh, our values that we obtained by looking at the allelic frequencies back into this Hardy-Weinberg equation. So given that the frequency of P is 0.906 and the frequency um, of Q or the mutant form is 0.094, take a moment, pause the video, and stuff those things into this equation and see what you come up with for the genotypic frequencies uh, in this population. All right, good work. Let's check the answers, make sure that we're all on the same page. If we uh, square our P number, this is what we end up with, 0.821. If we calculate in 2PQ, pretty easy, plug and chug all the way through. And then we calculate that uh, for Q squared. And if you add them all together, poof, they should add up to one and you've done it correctly. So this is the equation that you need to be familiar with. You need to be able to plug and chug and determine the numbers of each of the genotypes, and you also need to be able to look at the genotypic frequencies and extract what the allelic frequencies would be, respectively P and Q. So be sure that you're uh, very comfortable with that before you go sit for your exams. So to prove that this whole thing works in both directions, let's go ahead and try to once again extract the uh, allelic frequencies. And we can do that by taking the number uh, of these individuals multiplied, or the genotypic frequency, sorry, the number of uh, individuals in the population multiplied by the frequency, and voila, we end up with exactly the same number. And we can then look at the P squared and multiply that frequency by the number of individuals in the population. And guess what? Comes up with exactly the right number. And then let's take a look at the 2PQ, which is the heterozygotes. And you'll see that, alas, we have uh, the right number of those individuals. So it works both ways. Uh, again, be familiar with this equation and how to work with it to make predictions about allelic and genotypic frequencies. Mm -hmm.